Today we're making a spider farm. Not the normal spider farm, but the icky kind. You know how I know? So I found an abandoned mine shaft. So we're going to find a spider spawner and make a, our first XP farm in this world. Let's go! Hey, it's KMA. How's your day today? And welcome to the corner. As you see, I have diamond armor on now. And I uh, decided to do an upgrade because I wanted to make sure when I examine the abandoned mine, mine shaft that I am well prepared. Nothing's enchanted though with the guy, uh, diamond armor. But I will say this. I did enchant a couple of things. Um... I enchanted all my picks. So, this pick right here um, actually came like that without the mending. I added mending to it because I have the mending villager. But this pick I enchanted in an enchanting table and had the efficiency 4, the fortune 2, and the unbreaking 3. And I added mending to it. And this one has just the efficiency 4 and silk touch. And when I get uh, unbreaking, I will add unbreaking to it. And I also did the picks in here. I also got another fortune 2. Another fortune 3, just like the one I'm using right now. Another fortune 3. And another fortune 3 with unbreaking. It's amazing that I'm getting all these fortune things with my enchanting. I enchanted, uh, what, six things, and one, two, three, four, five of them had in fortune or fortune three on them. And I gotta remember, I gotta refresh your mind that this guy over here, the fortune three guy, his first book is fortune three, and his second book is fortune three. But first today, we are gonna work with the villagers again. So let me get a villager over here and see what type of trades he's going to give us. I have them now stopping out here because then they will choose this particular book. And like I say, I just switch it up until I get the enchantment that I want. And I'm trying for the highest book of each level. Or the, yeah, highest level book of each category. We have a keeper. We have a blast protection four. We don't have a blast protection four guy yet. So let me get some paper. We'll make a new apprentice. Doesn't take long. There you go. An apprentice. And now we'll move him to where he needs to be. Which is right here. And let's push him to his location. Now he had the trap door. Make sure baby zombies don't get him. And he's all set. He's in there. So let's go get the next guy. Ooh, we got the Unbreaking 3. I've been looking for this guy. Let's uh, unlock his trades. Alright, let's put him in his place. Alright, now we have 24 out of the 38 villagers I'm looking for. So just, uh, what, 14 more to go? So, hopefully if these guys continue behaving, uh, we'll, we'll be there soon. But the lower amount of uh, available books that I haven't... Oh, Luton 3. The um, lower amount of books left, it makes it harder for us to do this. Where's Luton 3? Luton 3 goes right there. Alright, let's unlock this guy. Ooh, the dreaded bookshelf trade. But for Luton 3, it's almost worth it. So we're just going to trade our farmed up stuff till we get 90 emeralds again. So there we go. We have 90 emeralds. Just like that. We're going to push him to his new home. We're going to put the lectern in front of him and replace the stair. And we've got the looting three guy. So like I say, we have most of the villagers. Um, I got a bunch there and a bunch over there I need to get. And then we'll be done. Um, 
Then I have one, two, three, four spots left over, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those yet. Um, most likely they're gonna, I'm gonna go through what the villagers trade for, and find out what I need the most of that I can trade with over there, which would be awesome. One of them is going to be at least a clear because trading for redstone and lapis is a good thing to do. Also glowstone. And the other two, I don't sure. Maybe weaponsmiths or whatever. But I'm going to continue doing this until I get some more and I or I run out of food. Depends on which one comes first, but I'm going to continue doing this until I can't anymore. With all the villager stuff going on, we needed some uh, we need some leather because I'm gonna start making some books, and I only have like 20 leather left, so um, I'm looking for some cows, and I believe I saw some over here. Yep, here's his cows. Let's see if I can get them into the little chamber. Now that I got the cows over here, here's the hard part: getting them in this hole. See if we can push them. Ooh, one's in. Let's try the other. There we go. And now we're gonna breed them. Well, first, let's put the water in. Okay, let's take the water out. <laughs> okay, the water's out. Let's put the post on top of them. And let's put the water back in. Not like that. So when we get the uh, maximum amount of cows in here, we'll have entity cramming. <laughs> I guess that was the first thing I breeded. I bred. All right, so that's taken care of. We're gonna have to wait before we can breed them again. So now I've been filling up my um, my trading hall with the villagers that I need. Um, and there we go. As you see, I have three specific holes. <clears throat> One for projectile protection four, power five, and sharpness five. Everything else I've gotten. And now I'm just gonna have to fill in these areas in with the proper villagers, so I'm gonna set that up now. Let's go get a villager. So this guy is ready to become a cleric. That's right, a cleric. So we need to um, sell our rotten flesh to this guy. I don't know how much we have. Let's see. We don't even have enough rotten flesh to sell for one emerald. So seeing we're unable to uh, sell this guy any rotten flesh, I'm going to make him an apprentice this way. And thou art apprentice. Yep. I want another cleric, so this guy's going to be another cleric. He so easily goes into his place. And let's uh, give him what he wants there we go and let's make this guy an apprentice we don't have enough emeralds so that we go emerald trading with this guy so we are trading our beetroots to get emeralds so we can um, finish this guy off so I don't have to worry about him losing his trades And there we go. He should be an apprentice now. Yep. All right, so let's get the next one in here. And the very last non-librarian in there. We have three villagers we gotta train. This guy's gonna be a Fletcher. Possibly. Looks like I'm gonna have to bring him outside to train him. Dang it. Alright, so this guy's gonna become a cartographer. 
Pay attention. There you go. Wait, 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 wait. Slow down. No, 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 no. And this guy needs sticks. So let's get a bunch of sticks. There we go. We got some sticks for you. Hope you like them. I hope they're yummy. There we go. You should be a smarty pants now. Yep, you're trained. All right. So let's get the cartographer table in here. There we go. This guy has turned into a cartographer. And all he needs is paper to trade with. So let's get some paper and trade with this guy. All right. So he should now be trained. So he's all ready to go now. And we just got to do some trading with this guy. I'm just going to buy some bricks. Make him a... Um, an apprentice pretty quickly not like I need these bricks he's now an apprentice I mean yeah he's a mason apprentice I'm gonna do some more trading and hopefully fill up those last three holes and this whole uh, area has been filled in with villagers and I'm gonna close off the front door make sure nothing can spawn in here We have all the villagers except for one. We've got one more to go, and that's projectile protection four. So I'm gonna do a uh, time lapse of me trying to get this. There we go. Projectile protection for the last villager that we need. I can't believe it. We have filled this hall. All we need to do is trade with the farmer villagers. There we go. We need to get 90 emeralds because this guy sells bookshelves. Doesn't do the paper trade, but that's okay. It's the last one of the day. So I'm okay with that. And it doesn't take long to get 90 emeralds. I sped this up a little bit. But this is twice the speed. Um, but you can see how fast I'm getting these emeralds. All you really need to do is make sure that you have some crops. And just trade and continue to harvest your crops. And then you'll always have something to trade with. So let's sell the, buy the bookshelves. There you go. He's an apprentice. All we do is push him in, and now we're gonna get rid of all these tracks because we're not gonna use this villager breeder anymore. Uh, we basically have all the villagers we're gonna ever need in this world. So now that I have all the villagers, we can. Uh, now go and do some mining. I'm gonna do a little time lapse of my doing the, uh, a mining run, and then I'm gonna uh, search an abandoned mine shaft with you. that 
abandoned mine shaft I was talking about. And uh, one of the reasons why I like abandoned mine shafts is for that reason right there is string. Well, not strings, but cobwebs. Other than that, abandoned mine shafts can go where the sun don't shine. I'm not a big fan of them. I don't like to die. And uh, I tend to die on these. Alright, so we took care of Creeper. There's a spider over there, but he doesn't seem to be harming anybody. Uh, we're in a cave now instead of the abandoned mine shaft. No! Oh, so that's what it's like over there. The little zombie horde. Just a little one. Tell you what. Um. <laughs> I haven't done much in the abandoned mine shaft yet. Instead, I found the cave system. Oh, looks like we found the skeleton spawner. Let me kill these uh, skeletons real quick. Uh oh, kill it! Kill it! Well, those two are going after each other. There we go. Yeah, so it looks like we found a skeleton spawner. So that's what I'm going to do instead of the spider spawner that I was expecting to do. So we're going to make this into a uh, skeleton uh, farm. First things first, we need to first make a uh, way out of here. So I'm just going to dig a hole all the way up to the top. Hey guys, I'm back. I was uh, making the skeleton spawner and I noticed I needed to go into the nether to get a piece of soul sand so I can get the skeletons to go up a whole bunch of blocks so I can drop them down and have them at a one hit kill. So I tried to record going into the nether and I got into a death loop, uh, but unfortunately the footage did not come out. My cat attacked my or tried to jump onto the desk here. <laughs> I said attack, but what had happened, he knocked over into the mic and the mic fell over onto the floor and short circuited, which crashed the whole system. So I lost the footage of the death loop, but I did get some soul sand, uh, which is excellent. Um, so then I uh, decided to show the whole thing again and record again. And for some reason, uh, that footage didn't work out either. So. I'm a little bit perturbed because this is the third or fourth time I've done this little section, so bear with me if I seem a little perturbed. <laughs> so uh, to get back into it, I have enchanted all my gear now to the max that it can be allowed. So be allowed to the max that can happen. So I have my uh, Silk Touch Efficiency 5 pick here. I got my efficiency 5 fortune 3 pick, my sharpness 5 looting 3 sword, my bow and my infinity bow. One of the times I tried to record I had the um, mending bow and I just switched it over to infinity so we lost that footage too. Yes, I'm doing good today. We have our efficiency 5 silk touch shovel. We have our efficiency 5 sharpness 5 silk touch axe then I don't know why we have that bow we don't need that bow and then on t my actual gear we have the depth strider fall feather fallen four 
projectile protection four uh, shoes. We got the fire mending four uh, leggings. We got the protection four chest piece, and we got the blast protection four aqua affinity respiration helmet. So let me tell you a little uh, strategy that I do. Because normally we end up having elytra, and so the um, so the chest piece isn't used, and it's usually an elytra. So I put protection, the protection uh, enchant on the chest piece because the other ones I use the other uh, protections. I got the blast protection on my helmet, I got the fire protection, and I got the uh, projectile protection. So. With those three, I am pretty much protected over all the different things that could happen to me. So putting regular protection on the chest piece isn't a great loss when you eventually put on the elytra. Looks like it's time for me to sleep, so I'm going to take a nap. There's also a couple other things I wanted to show you real quick. Over here, uh, I just have a basic vine farm, so we can uh, get vines going because uh, mossy cobble is a good thing to build with, and I'm going to be building with mossy cobble over there, probably. Uh, also over here, I have a cactus farm, just a basic cactus farm, and uh, that's doing okay. So let me show you um, what I've done with this place. <laughs> I have put the portal in the front entrance to my mining hut, so now it, the portal goes right in. And I'm not even gonna go in there. I'm afraid of the Nether. My first death loop in this in this game is the Nether, of course, which is kind of sad, but expected with my gameplay. I suck at the Nether. So this is the skeleton farm. Uh, the spawner's right over here behind us. You can't really see it, but that's where the skellies come. So let me plug that hole before we get in. They uh, take a because of the salt sand. They take the ride up to the top. It actually sticks out of the ground, uh, then it falls back down here, and then there were one hit kill. This room I'm gonna make into the skelly room. I'm gonna make it look good, and uh, let's uh, get to some killing, because that's what we do best is killing or dying, depending. We are on the other end of the killing. So this is actually the thing on top of the uh, world, which it looks ugly as sin. Uh, this is where the skeletons actually go across in a, a uh, water path, then fall back down. All right, so let's name our bow. The bow is going to be called Gates of Delirium. <laughs> All right, so what what is the explanation to my naming of these things? I'll give you a hint. The first thing I, I uh, named was my Fortune 3 pickaxe, which I named Something's Coming. That, by the way, is a song on Yes's first studio album. Then I named the second thing I uh, created The Prophet, which is the name of a Yes song on their second studio album. Then the sword gets Yours is No Disgrace, which is the name of a song on Yes's third studio album. Then we got uh, Close to the Edge, Ritual, Gates of Delirium, and what was the other one? South Side of the Sky, maybe? Which are all names of Yes songs on albums. So that's the key to the naming of these tools, and they're all songs on Yes albums. Yes is my favorite band. That is why I do that. But anyways, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, sorry that it ended a little weird. Uh, I lost a lot of footage, wasted a lot of time, and perturbed a lot of Keiths. That's me. <laughs> so I was kind of perturbed at the moment, but uh, that stuff happens, but you can just keep the show going. And uh, I will be back next week with another episode. Have a great day. It's KMA. I'm glad that you stuck around for the skeleton spawners uh, and finishing off the villagers today. And bye-bye. Uh,